Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Today we're going to do a guide on how to get the Skyline emulator working on Android devices. I'm going to primarily use the AYN Odin as my handheld device here for this video, but if you have any sort of high-powered Android phone, this should work just fine too. That being said, it is recommended to use a pretty powerful Android device, something with a Snapdragon 845 or higher. Now, Skyline is one of two Switch emulators available on the Android, and it's the first one that I've ever featured on this channel. And that's because the other emulator has a lot of issues with it. It requires you to buy a proprietary controller, and there's some pretty credible evidence that they're using stolen code as well. Now Skyline, the emulator we're going to feature in this video, it doesn't have any of those issues. And the team has been hard at work on increasing compatibility to the point now where there are over 75 games that are up and working. And so it feels like the perfect time to introduce this emulator and to show you how to get it set up. And I gotta say, even though the catalog of compatible games right now is a little bit limited, there were still a half a dozen games from my own Nintendo Switch library that were able to be ported over. And I think that's some really great progress. And if you've never done any of this before, I recommend going to the Yuzu Quick Start Guide. I'll have it linked in my video description. In this guide, they'll walk you through the process of hacking your Nintendo Switch, and then also backing up certain files that you will need if you want to do emulation on a different device. In particular, the Nintendo Switch emulator will require production and title keys. And then after that, of course, you're going to want to dump your cartridge or eShop files. Now, this emulator is still in the works, and so because of that, most of the cartridge games are not going to work at all. And so instead, in this video, I'm I'm going to focus on these six eShop titles which I have here in my Nintendo library. And near the end of the video, I'll show you a demonstration of how some of these games are running. A couple of them are a little bit buggy, but honestly, overall, I'm really impressed. And so I'm super excited to show this off, and without any further delay, let's jump into it. Now before we even get started, you're probably wondering whether or not any games are actually going to work on your device in the first place. Well luckily, the Skyline team has an entire compatibility list on their GitHub page. And here you'll find a listing of over 800 games, and what you can do here is you can sort them by label. And so there's an in-game status, which means they'll mostly play, and there's also a playable status as well. And as you can see, there are 75 titles as of today that are fully playable. Not only that, this number increases almost every single day. There's a large community behind this, and it's it's really awesome to see it work. And so I recommend going to this page, checking out the playable list, and see whether or not it's going to be worth it for you based on the game catalog you own. And because we're going to be using the AYN Odin, I also want to point out that the Odin community sheet has a tab for the Nintendo Switch as well. And so there have been community members who have been testing out the Skyline emulator on the Odin itself. This will be another great place to reference in case you want to see whether or not your favorite game is working. Now, there are two ways of getting Skyline. You can go to their website and download it directly, or you can go to their GitHub page. You could either do this from your computer or directly on the device, which is what we'll do here later in the video. Now, this emulator works best with Snapdragon phones, and if you have one of those, what I recommend doing is joining the Discord of Skyline, and then go into their general chat channel, and then look at the first pin message. In there, there's going to be a thread with different turnip drivers. And these are open source Vulkan drivers that are specifically made to work really well with Snapdragon. So we're gonna download the most recent one of those as well. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna assume that you've taken all of your games as well as your system files and put them on an SD card or put them on your phone. And you would set this up exactly like how we would transfer any other file. Let me show you how I have it set up. Here within my file browser, I'm gonna go into the SD card. And in here, I have a folder named Games. And within that, I made a folder called Switch. And so in here, you can see that I have a bunch of games already loaded up on the SD card. These can be in NSP format or XCI. Also within here, you can see that I added the latest Turnip graphics drivers. And and Skyline is actually going to want you to keep it zipped, so don't unzip it. And then finally, within here, I have a folder named Keys, and I have my production and title keys right here. These are all the things we need in order to get Skyline working. But first, we need to actually install Skyline, so let's do that now. We're going to go to skyline-emu.1. Within here is a Downloads tab, and all you have to do is just click on the latest download available here. As you can see, this one's from a few days ago. From there, it'll prompt you to install the APK onto your device. It may also prompt you for some permission settings in order to install a game from Chrome. Anyway, that's all you have to do to download Skyline. From here, I'm just going to drag it over into my emulators folder, and because I'm a stickler for organization, I'm also going to move it up near the front. And so yeah, now alongside all my other favorite emulation apps, I now have a Nintendo Switch emulator. It's pretty amazing that we're putting this on the AYN Odin. Alright, now that we're good to go, let's go ahead 
ahead and start setting up Skyline to start playing our games. When you first open up Skyline, it's not going to show anything here. We'll do everything within the settings. Now, first thing we want to change is the search location. This is going to be the folder it's going to look for new games. And like we showed before, I have it on my SD card. So I'm going to go to the SD card, then my games folder, and then Nintendo Switch. After you've navigated to your game folder, just press allow access, and it's going to ask you, do you really want to do this? And then you press, yeah, man, I want to do it. Okay, now it knows how to find your games. Next, there are a couple other settings you can do to change the display of the app itself. We're not going to mess with those, but I am going to turn on performance statistics so I can see my frames per second on the top left. Next is the GPU driver configuration, and this is where we'll navigate to those latest turnip drivers if you downloaded them. Now, this isn't necessary. You can just use your system driver, but if you are using a Snapdragon phone, I recommend doing this. Anyway, all you have to do is just find that zip file, then double click on it, and it'll go right here. Next, all we have to do is just click on it, and we're good to go. And then next, we want to import our production and title keys. This is pretty easy too. Just click on it, navigate to wherever your keys files are, and then add them one at a time. If you get an error, here, you may have a problem with the dumped or downloaded key files that you have. Now, if you're not using a super powerful phone, I do recommend taking it off of docked mode. That way it's going to play in handheld mode. It's going to lower the resolution a little bit in some games, but it's going to be worth it for the performance. And really after that, there's not a lot more configuration that you need to do. Now, if you're just going to be playing this on a phone, you can just use touchscreen controls, but because the Odin has built-in controls, we're going to set that up next. Under input, you want to select configure controller number one. And first thing, I would disable the on screen controls so that they don't distract you. Next, all you really have to do is scroll down to near the bottom of the page and then map all of your buttons. And you do this one at a time. And again, this is super simple. You basically will just click on it and then map each of your directions for your analog sticks and then your D-pad and then the buttons themselves. And this is all self-explanatory, so I'm not going to run you through this individually. I trust that you'll be able to figure this out. Anyway, after that, we're actually done setting up. All we had to do was add our games folder, the drivers, and then the two production and title keys. So if we back out to the main menu, now we can see that all of our games have been loaded up from our SD card. And so now we're actually ready to start testing out these games. Now, first word of caution here is this is a very early emulator, so I would not expect to be able to play through every single game completely fine. You're likely either going to find minor or major graphical issues, and some games will not boot at all, or maybe they'll crash after the front menu. For my own testing, I stuck with the games that were on the compatibility list and then just tested them myself. For the AYN Odin in particular, I did set it to performance mode as well to make sure I gave it the most amount of juice possible. And like I mentioned, compatibility is not quite perfect. A good example here is SteamWorld Dig 2. In some parts when I was doing some mining, I did find that there were these black boxes that were kind of like moving around here on the left side of the screen. Now these textures really didn't affect my gameplay, but they were something that I noticed. In fact, I had a lot of fun with this game when I was testing it. I've actually put about four hours into this game over the past month on Steam, and I'm actually kind of tempted to start all over on the Odin instead. The Odin has really great battery life, and so I would expect to get between six or eight hours of gameplay on a single charge. Another game that played really well was Celeste. I have heard reports of this crashing, but I did play this for about a half hour and I didn't have any issues at all. Another game I tested and I've been really looking forward to playing is called Carto. This one is kind of a mix of an adventure and a puzzle game. Unfortunately, this one does have some pretty hefty graphical issues. For example, when I change over to the map screen and start adjusting the map, which is kind of the mechanic of this entire game, when I go back into the game world, as you can see here, unfortunately, the textures are not working properly. And so this is one of those times where you may just have to wait and see if this team makes an update that fixes these graphical issues. And so across the board, I would recommend, you know, just kind of being patient and seeing how things work. This is very early on, and to me, I'm kind of in that honeymoon phase where I'm just amazed they're working at all. And I bet six months from now, it'll be way better too. Now, another game that works just fine was The Way Remastered. It's ironic, but I've had this game in my Switch catalog for years at this point, and I've never actually played it. I think I just picked it up on a sale at one point. And surprisingly, now that I have it on the Odin, where I have all of my retro games already available for me, this is just kind of awesome. In fact, I'm now like 30 minutes further in this game than I ever was before. And so it's kind of hard to articulate, but yeah, I found myself playing these games that have just kind of been languishing 
publishing on my Nintendo Switch, which is mostly what my kids play on anyway. But now on the AYN Odin, I've got it all in one. I can play Android games, I can play my retro game collection, and then I can also stream from modern consoles or using something like Xbox Game Pass. And to top it off, I can make a lot of good progress on Nintendo Switch indie titles, which I haven't touched in a long time. I think when you combine this with the fact that the AYN Odin Pro can also dual boot an ARM version of Windows, we're looking at a really fantastic console. Anyway, that's about it for this video here. I just wanted to give you a quick guide on how to get this all set up and to show you some gameplay here on the Odin. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you tried this emulator out yet, or are you still waiting for better compatibility? As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.